50 people were asked if they speak French or German or Spanish. Uh, these are the information. Two of these people are chosen at a random. Work out the probability that they both only Spanish. Okay, first thing, make sure you make a Venn diagram with a square because square com contains including the universal or, or all the elements. So we have three subjects or th three languages and we have the French, the German, and then the Spanish. Let's fill this information one by one. Uh, I always recommend guys to go always on the middle part. So find the one where everybody speak all the languages. So two speak French, German, and Spanish, and this is what I'm talking about. So start with that. The one where everyone speaks the same language or everyone are included on those three. So we have two on the very middle. Next, 31 speak French. When you say 31 speak French, everything inside this circle, that, this, this, that, will be added to 31. But it's the, uh, the information right now is not complete. So I will look for some other information here. Four speak French and Spanish, but not German. So four speak French. French and Spanish, this is the uh, part where they speak French and Spanish. But then they said they don't speak German, so they will not be part of this. So this one is just here. So four, they speak French and Spanish, but it's not inclusive on the German part. This is part of the German. So done with that. Next, seven speak German and Spanish. So German and Spanish. So when you see German and Spanish over here, everything on this part, the one that looks like an I. So 7 must be here. Since we already have 2 here, we're going to minus the 2 from the 7. So only 5 here. So look at the difference between these two. This and that. There are differences. The difference is the word not German. So just read that carefully and try to internalize. Next. 8 do not speak any of the languages. So 8 is outside. 8 do not speak any of the languages. And then, 31 speak French. So, we, we, we can still uh, answer this one yet, but let's answer the other one. So, all 10 people who speak German speak at least one languages. So, it says here that 10 people speak, I mean, all 10 people who speak German speak at least one other language. So, it means there will be nothing in here. This will be zero. Why? Because everything that speaks German can also speak French or Spanish. So 5 plus 2 plus 3, that gives us the 10. This one, we don't have anyone, anyone who speak only German. And then lastly, so that's done, 31 speak French. Since 31 speak French, it means this plus this plus this must add up to 31. That's why you just have to do 31 minus 4 minus 2 minus 3. Minus 4, minus 2, minus 3, and we will be having 22 in there. So, this is our Venn diagram. Now, just to make sure that uh, I correctly did all of this, all I have to do is to add them up. So, we have 8. 8 here. Plus 22, plus 3, plus 4, plus 2, plus 5. And 44. There's still 6 missing people. So, it has to be here. Why? Because remember that there's no one in here who speaks only German, so the remaining six must be here. Next, we're going to answer the question now once you finish the Venn diagram. Work out the probability that they both speak, or they both only speak Spanish. So, how many people only speak Spanish? Six. So, basically, six over 50 times five over 49. Why? For example, imagine these people, we put them in one room. We're going to choose one from them, and what's the probability of a person uh, only sp uh, that the person only pick, uh, speak Spanish? So, 6 out of 50. That is the first time you pick someone from the room. But, for example, uh, I mean, for the second one, you're going to pick someone from the room. So, we only have 5 Spanish-speaking uh, per uh, person. Why? Because you, only, you already took one from the uh, from the beginning that's why it's only five and why is it 49 because uh, on the first attempt we have 50 people but since you already picked one from the very beginning we only have 49 and all you have to do is to put this on the calculator 
So 6 times 5, which is 30. And then 50 times 49, which is 2,450. And we can simplify that. Which is 3 out of 245. And that is it. Okay, so on this question, we have to find AD. AD is this. I will just say AD is X. I need my AD as X. Since we need to find AD in three significant figures, we're going to use this triangle over here, ABD. But the problem is I only have two information. So maybe I could use the other triangle to find maybe this side or that side. I don't know which one I could find or maybe this angle. So I'm going to figure it out. So using the triangle BDC, I can actually get this. Let's just say that's Y. How can I get that? Using sine rule. So Y over sine 34 degrees is equivalent to, since I started with the side here, so I'm going to do 12.5 over sine 109 degrees. By the way, guys, if you uh, if you don't know how to do sine rule and cosine rule here, I have another video for that. You can watch the uh, video first so you can uh, practice more on sine and cosine rule. So I want my y over here. So all I have to do is bring sine 34 on this side. So y is equivalent to 12.5 over sine 109 degrees times sine 34 degrees. I'll just put it on the calculator. So 12.5 over sine 109, just make sure you close this in parentheses, times sine 34. And I got an answer. So this is this side over here, the y. So I will just write first, as much as possible, I, I usually write a lot of numbers or a lot of decimals to make my answer more accurate. That is my y. Now, I want to find the x here. So how do I find the x in here? So this one falls on the category of cosine rule. And our formula for cosine rule, since I want this side, so x squared is equivalent to these two sides, 11.4 squared plus, I will just put y squared because it's a very long number. So y squared, or I can write three, significant, three decimals, minus two times the 11.4, times the y again and then cosine the angle in between them which is 86 degrees so as i told you guys if you don't know how to do cosine rule you can uh, watch my channel and i made a video for that for sine rule and cosine rule so i will just put everything on the calculator so 11.4 squared plus since my answer earlier is still saved i will just use y as my answer so answer squared. But for example, you didn't save it. You can just write two decimals, three. But I usually recommend more decimals to make it more accurate. So answer squared minus two times, I will just keep on writing 11.4 times my y, which is the answer, times cosine 86. And I will be getting this answer, but don't forget, guys, that is just x squared. So, 172.85, blah, 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 blah. All you have to do is to square root both sides. So, I will just square root our answer, and that is our x in three significant figures, which is 13.1. So, this is our answer. So here are two right angle triangles. Given that tangent E is equivalent to tangent F, find the values of X. So they said that tangent E is equivalent to tangent F. And how do you, what is tangent E? Tangent E is opposite over adjacent. So tangent E over here is opposite, which is X, over adjacent, which is 4X minus 1. And that's equivalent to tangent F, which is opposite 6X plus 5 all over adjacent. And we need to find the value of x. So you can just cross multiply 
So write an equal sign, multiply these two by expanding the bracket. So multiplying this by bracket, so I'll be I think I need more space. So multiplying these two, that's going to be 24x squared, 4x by 6x, 4x by 5, plus 20x, negative 1 times 6, negative 6x, negative 1 times 5, negative 5. Equals to, I'm going to multiply these two now, so 12x times x, 12x squared, 31 times x, plus 31x. All I have to do is to simplify this first, simplify the left side and the right side. So simplifying the left side, I will be getting 24x squared plus 14x minus 5. Simplifying the right side, we don't have to. There's nothing to simplify. Next, I will bring everything to this side to make the other side equivalent to 0. So if I bring all of this to the other side, 24 minus 12, that's going to be 12x squared. 14x minus uh, 31, which is, I think, 17. Let me just double check, guys. Yes, so negative 17. And then minus 5 is equivalent to 0. So in here, we can uh, we could do factoring. If we can do a factoring, or I can just use my calculator to get my answer since we're allowed to use a calculator anyways. But for, for those who are... Uh, okay, for, first, I'm going to get my answer using the calculator. There's an option here. You just go mode 5. As you can see, 5 the equation. 5 and then 3. As you can see, number 3, x squared. So all you have to do is to write your number. So we have 12 equal sign, negative 17, and then negative 5. And it will give you answers, number 1. So x sub 1 is 5 over 3, and x sub 2 is negative 1 fourth. Since one of our side here is x, or our, our sides here are uh, excess, they contain excess, we cannot use a negative. So this one over here, we're going to reject it because we don't have a negative sign. So we will only use 5 over 3 here. And that is our answer here, 5 over 3. Now, how do we go back to the original option? Just mode and then 1. So for those who wants to, uh, who wants to factorize this, we have, uh, I have a video on this on YouTube, also uh, factoring, factoring trinomial. You can watch that video if you want to show this because I just want to make this video short. So watch this. Uh, I have a uh, video on this, factoring. Lamp A, lamp B, and lamp C. Lamp A flashes every 20 seconds. So this one flashes every 20 seconds, this one flashes every 45 seconds, and the last lamp flashes every 120 seconds. Now the question is, how many times in one hour will three lamps flash at the same time? The first thing that you have to do is find out how many seconds we have in an hour. Because even if you don't get the answer, at least you, you will get a partial mark for this. So in one hour... So in, uh, in an hour, how many seconds do we have? First, in an hour, we have 60 minutes. And for every 60 minutes, we have multiplied it by 60 seconds. Therefore, in an hour, we have 3,600 seconds. Next, so we have three numbers, 20, 45, and 120. So how are we going to find out when are they going to flash at the same time? So we are going to find the least common multiple of the three. And there are many ways in there. I know in GCSE there's also a different way. But I will, try, I will teach you my way in here. And I hope you understand this way. All you have to do is think of a number that can divide this 25, 45, and 120 at the same time. So any numbers that can divide all of them, which is 5. So we divide them all by 5. This is going to be 4. And then 45 divided by 5, which is 9. And then 120 divided by 5, which is 24. So if you can't find out the uh, numbers, guys, you are allowed to use calculator. Don't worry. And then, again, 20 divided by 5, 4. 45 divided by 5, 9. 
120 divided by 5 is 24 and then just keep on going is there any number that can divide all of these if there is no uh, if there is no number that can divide all of them you can just choose between two for example 4 and 24 they are both divisible by 4 so you can still divide by 4 ignoring the 9 for now so 4 and 24 are both divisible by 4 so this is gonna be 1 this is gonna be still 9 we will not divide this because it's not divisible as if you're only dividing these two and then 24 divided by 4 which is 6 next is there anything that can divide 1 9 and 6 all at the same time if there's none maybe two of them can be divided for example 9 and 6 they are both divisible by 3 so I will divide them both by 3 ignoring the 1 now so that's gonna be 3 that's gonna be 2 and this is still 1 because we didn't touch this one so our least common multiple is all you have to do is to multiply this letter L LCM least common multiple so multiply those three so we have uh, so we have five so we have five by four by three by three by two I don't have to multiply it by one it's useless anyways and as you can see they will all flash every 360 seconds since they will all flash every 360 seconds all we have to do now is 3600 divided by 360 seconds so 3600 divided by 360 and they will flash 10 times so at the same time they will all flash 10 times within an hour 